I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on our channel on data analytics and data engineering. This week, I'm going to tell you about one of the most important things that you can learn as a new data engineer, and that is how to walk through a record set or a loop through a record set. And we'll do our example in Microsoft Access, since that's where lots of you guys are going to be getting started. I can't even say how important it is to learn how to do this specific skill. When you're learning Microsoft Access and you really want to get better at what you're doing, you really need to know how to loop through a record set. Let's go do it. Okay, so this is the Northwind Analytics database that we worked on before. Go back to our previous episodes to see that one. Um, in this case, I've opened the orders table and you can see there's an order ID and an order date. I just chose this at random. Uh, you could use any database for this, whether it's an MDB or ACCDB access database would be fine. Now to do this task, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new module. So we'll go create. We're going to choose module, not class module from the ribbon. So to do this task, we're going to do a little bit of coding. So I'll create a new subroutine. So in order to do that, we'll use the, the sub identifier there. And we're going to make a couple of variables to do the simplest walkthrough to start. And the simplest one is just to open the record set and to loop through the records and get some value out and display it. And we'll do that here. So our first variable is going to be the database variable. Uh, which we're just going to refer to our current database that we have open, the database file. Um, setting the DB variable is a nice convenient way to refer to our current sort of workspace and, and database that we have open. And the second variable is the record set variable. And uh, I like to call the DAO.RecordSet. Uh, there are some people that uh, don't like that one, uh, but I prefer to use that and we'll create a do loop um, set up here so we'll choose a do until and then the rst.eof eof just means end of file so that means when it gets to the end stop looping through and we add the uh, rst.move next so that every time the loop goes around we move to the next one so we don't loop forever okay and we got our do loop created We'll add an rst.close on the end so that uh, we close the record set when we're done because we want to do that. And we'll set our rst equal to nothing so it just sort of clears the variable for us and releases the memory. And that will help us to complete our procedure. And from there I'll go ahead and click the, the go button on the toolbar there. And you can see that we've looped through our record set and we've captured our order date that we asked to print out from each row and that's how we do that. So you might be asking yourself why would I want to loop through a record set in in Access and there are many answers and you'll find as you do more and more uh, data engineering or or analytics you'll find that there are situations where you need information um, that is between records as opposed to in, in the same set of records. So um, as opposed to just doing a query, you may want to compare the record that you're currently on to the record before this record. And one of the nice and easy ways of doing that is by looping through the record set. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that we did in the last one but I'm going to go ahead and uh, populate some variables so that I can compare uh, the date on the current record to the date on the previous record. So just as we did in our previous example, I've set up the DB variable and the RST variable for our database and record set. And I'm also going to add an SQL uh, string variable and a, a last and this date variable. Uh, which are going to help us to compare uh, values between rows in a particular record set. In this case, our orders table. So just like I did in our previous example, 
I'll go ahead and uh, set the DB variable and the RST variable. And uh, I think I'll skip our strsql variable this time. I'm just going to write directly into the uh, open record set um, statement. So I'll just put select order ID, order date, and I'll just check that those are the right names here. So yeah, order space ID and order space date, okay. Uh, select order ID, order date from orders, and I'm gonna order by the order date. So that's gonna help us to compare the dates between the last date that we had an order and the current order. So by looking at the last order and the current order, we can see how many days there were between the last order and the current one. And we can set that uh, value for every row in our record set so we can see how long it was between orders. And we'll do the same thing that we did last time. We'll set up a do until loop uh, with the rst.eof and the eof means end of file. So uh, when we put our move next at the very end of our uh, inside the loop there, uh, that will move us um, to the next row and then when we hit the last row it'll stop looping which is what we want it to do. Um, so to get us started what I'll do is I'll set our our last date and equal to some random date that I know is not in our record set so that we can compare and then each time we go through the loop uh, we'll go ahead and we'll set our um, this date uh, equal to the value of the date that's in our record that we're currently looking at. In this case, uh, we'll say we'll say RST order date with the reference exclamation mark, and you can see that's our order column there. And there we can see we have our order date set. So now we have a, a last date and a this date. And so what I'll do is I'll go back and uh, create another variable um, which I'll make a long integer and I'll call it our difference variable and we're going to make that variable equal to the difference between the the current date this date and last date and I think I got these in the right order I'll check these after we try it out the first time here um, so we'll go ahead and I think I'll add a counter as well so that uh, we know how many times we went through the loop, but we can also tell when we're uh, at the zero, the, the starting position, or if we're into actually a valid comparison. So to do that, I'll add a uh, long integer again as a, uh, a variable. And then I can set that to I'll set it to zero to start. And then I'll go down and I'll increment that each time that we go through our loop. I'll just say our counter is equal to the counter plus one. And what that'll do is that gives us, uh, well, first of all, we can use the count if we need to through our procedure. Uh, but in this case, I can say, well, if it's equal to zero, I'll change that to one here in a minute. Uh, but uh, if it's equal to uh, the starting record, then then uh, just show zero. Um, otherwise, show um, that the difference is the difference between the two that we calculated in our calculation there. And that'll give us a nice uh, display that'll show us the right number of days. And then we'll put uh, debug.print so that we see it in our immediate window. Uh, we'll, we'll show, let's see, okay, we'll show our, how about our ID number? We'll put order ID and then we'll concatenate that, put it together in one string with uh, our count of how many days, uh, or our, our calculation of how many days that were between orders. We'll say uh, days since the last uh, order. And that'll give us a nice little string in our output that we can see when we hit run. Okay, so I'll hit 
run on that and that'll give us some results and uh, so I'll compile it first so a debug compile will tell if there's any big errors in your in your uh, procedure uh, and I can see oh this doesn't look right at all so um, I think that could be my last and this variables in my calculation might be backwards so I'll go ahead and switch those back around and that should make one fix uh, for our procedure and I'll do one more thing Okay, and I'll go ahead and make a last couple changes and we'll set the last date equal to this date at the end of the loop so that when it goes around and this date is updated it will be different and we can compare them and I'll set our counter check equal to 1 instead of 0 so it checks the first row and puts a 0 uh, for the difference in days and then I'll close the record set after our loop and I'll hit go and we can see we've got a nice uh, list there with the order ID on one side and the count since the last uh, order in the uh, right side. And if we check the uh, first couple rows we can see that the uh, there's two days between uh, the third and second order and uh, which tells us uh, which is right and then if we check the first order uh, there's five days between first and second order and that sort of gives you an idea of how that could be useful. And that, my friends, is how we loop through a record set in Microsoft Access. If you enjoyed our lesson today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And uh, click the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any uh, new posts that I make on the channel. And if you have any questions or comments about what you saw, please go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions feel free to ask and thanks again for watching i'll see you next time